Hey YouTube, today I'm going to give you a quick info video tutorial on how to repair your daytime running lamp control module on your second generation Honda CRV SUV. This particular vehicle is a 2004 and one of the complaints that uh, was given to me about this particular vehicle was the daytime running lamps and all the headlight bulbs were replaced and the problem is that uh, the DRL light here on the dash is indicating that the daytime running lamps are on but as you can see at the beginning of the video here that they're not illuminated um, this vehicle has quite a bit of mileage about 300,000 plus kilometers or so but I've typically seen that the DRL module uh, will fail long before that uh, due to either a failed module or just simply from bad solder joints so we're gonna take it apart and repair it and put it all back together so on this second generation CRV um, the DRL module is actually really easy to access or at least easier than most cars um, and it's actually located here behind this dash panel right above the uh, hood release and it's a gray box uh, which I'll show you next but to gain access to it there's actually a little trim panel piece underneath here that you turn a thumb knob on uh, to drop it down and some pop clips and then you just basically unsnap the cover out from underneath and uh, we'll be able to see the module and remove the board from the module housing Let's begin by removing the lower dash cover panel here. How you take this off is that there's a little thumb knob here uh, that's normally locked in this position and we're going to turn it counterclockwise to unlock it in that manner and pull this panel off and there's some clips here that uh, actually latch this cover in place so that will just come right out. Looking up underneath the dash here you can actually see the DRL module located just left and above of the kick panel here on the driver's side and it's got a looks like a gray connector plugging into a blue connector uh, into this gray box now the 10 millimeter bolt that holds this little module to the frame is kind of embedded up in the dash but what I found is that you can actually just use a small flathead screwdriver and pry the edges around this box and pull this actual control uh, assembly board right out and just resolder it or at least discover what is wrong with it this is what this DRL module looks like when it's disassembled and you kind of got to use two flathead screwdrivers and be somewhat of a contortionist to pull this out but that's what it looks like and you can just slide it right out of the case so looking at this module up close we can clearly see that there are bad solder joints on the actual relay pack assemblies here because these things do run quite hot because this is essentially like a resistor driver box um, to make your headlamps, I believe the high beams on this vehicle run at low intensity and of course what it needs to do is step down the voltage from 12 volts to probably around 8 volts or so uh, to be to make it qualify for DRL. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to get into the details of all of that but um, it comes down to the fact that you can see here the solder joints are kind of gross looking and they're not very smooth like these nice ones here on the side and so what we're going to do is that we're going to re-solder you know, these sort of uh, bad looking joints and I can actually show you here that one of the joints is in fact cracked uh, right here if you can see it in the video you can see that there's a micro fracture of some sort I'm trying to give you guys a better perspective it's not easy to film without a tripod but anyways it's right here um, so what we're going to do is we're going to remelt all the solder uh, use a rosin core uh, flux sort of included solder and get this thing repaired. So I've got my soldering iron set to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm just going to begin um, using the solder here and the iron to just begin melting the solder on all these uh, damaged joints. Uh, now that I'm actually indoors doing the soldering on my table here I can actually evidently see how bad the uh, the damaged joints are. So when you're soldering you want to make sure that you don't go crazy with it uh, and use too much and also to heat the joint too much um, more than it needs to be. Um, when you're soldering you don't want to melt the solder on the actual solder itself like meaning this you want to actually heat the joint up um, and then just essentially apply solder to the tip of the iron and the joint at the same time and let the solder flow properly um, onto the piece that you're working on. Um, sometimes depending on the type of solder you use, uh, you'd want to use, I personally like using leaded solder, there's a lot of these lead free solder variants out there now to meet uh, ROHS compliance and I can't stand using them because they just suck and they don't flow well. Um, 
But whichever, I mean, if you have some reasonably decent uh, soldering techniques, you'll do just fine. And sure as heck better than buying a new DRL module from your local Honda dealership, you know, for over 150 bucks. Key thing to good soldering, making sure you heat the joint properly and making sure your tip is good and making sure that the heat you're using is, is at the right temperature. Um, so you can see here I'm contacting the joint and then I'm going to apply solder in this manner and then I can move my iron around uh, and apply more solder to each side of this joint. A good solder joint also um, won't have any oxidization so you can tell my joints here are nice and shiny, they're not dull. Um, so that's another sign that you did a reasonably good job of soldering. Um, it is worth mentioning for solder jobs, because I see this mistake happen far too often, is don't use a gun type soldering iron um, that's rated at like 100 watts. Uh, this iron is a professional bench iron and it's only in like 35 or 40 watts. Um, with a maximum capability actually I shouldn't say um, I should make that clear I think it's up to 60 watts uh, for those that are wondering what model of iron I'm using I'm using a Weller ESD compliant WES 50 so I guess it's probably 50 watts my bad um, whatever but anyways so basically how I'm deciding which joints need to be resoldered is going to be based on the um, fractures that I'm seeing on the solder joints uh, or any joints that are dull looking that look like they've been heat stressed um, and have oxidized as a result of that. Um, not necessarily the most scientific technique, you know, main relays uh, can be repaired in the same manner, um, but I've done this a million times and I just know what to look for. It's always usually the relays or, you know, sort of high current carrying devices. Uh, that cause problems. Um, or if you're overzealous, you can always go and resolder everything on the board. If you overdo it on the solder job and you don't do it right, you can always use this product called uh, solder wick. It's like a copper braid that you would, you know, pinch between your iron and the joint being soldered, and that will suck up and absorb all the solder that you applied onto the uh, onto the spot that you want to have it removed from. Um, so basically. What I've just done here is I've resoldered all the relay pack joints right here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 joints. Um, and those were all the ones that were kind of cracked. In fact, I'll probably just do these two middle ones to make it 14 as well, just to be safe. So you can tell how quickly my iron flows the heat and flows the solder. But they have these nice little even bubbles. So you can see, you know, that's okay. It's not the best soldering job I've done, but it will do. So let's go and put this back in the car and test it out. So let's go and reinstall this module piece in the reverse order of how we took it out. Reinstall the lower dash cover and we should be good to go. So I just reinstalled the module and started the car and released the parking brake uh, because for DRLs to actually function the handbrake needs to be released and before at the beginning of this video you saw that the DRL light on the dash was illuminated indicating that the DRL lights are not functioning on the CRB um, and I had mentioned to you previously that the headlamps were replaced before with no success uh, but everything else was working fine as far as low beam high beams went so let's take a look around the front and see if they work now so this is the driver's side headlamp and you can tell that this lamp is lit dimly like they should be for DRLs. And this is the passenger side illuminated in the same manner. So the cause of failure for DRLs not functioning properly or being intermittent is a direct result of a faulty or intermittent connection within the DRL module and more often than not a soldering job can repair this issue. Uh, in more extreme cases where the DRL module is completely fried, um, which is almost never, uh, you could always just go and buy a replacement module and reinstall a new one, um, but at a cost of about 150 bucks from Honda Canada. Here, there's 15 minutes of my time, and I'm golden and save the 150 bucks.